Good morning, everyone. It's Celeste. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, it's morning here, and um, this weekend I'm celebrating my birthday. I have a spring birthday in April, and so um, I thought that uh, later this morning I'd like to take you along with me to go to Highland Park, which is one of my absolute favorite parks in this area. And Highland Park was designed by the architect and um, city planner, Frederick Law Olmsted, who also designed Central Park in New York City. And it's just a gorgeous place. It's 150 acres of plantings, uh, many different kinds of trees and flowering shrubs and beautiful plantings all over. And uh, everything's starting to bloom here. And in fact, in a few weeks, we have the Lilac Festival, which Rochester is known for. Um, and then later on, I'd like to come back here and share with you uh, just a small birthday haul um, and share with you some of the books that I received both as gifts and ones that I um, picked up at a secondhand bookstore that I really like. So come along with me now, come hither, and uh, we'll enjoy the park, shall we? Okay. gorgeous morning here in Highland Park. Highland Park was designed by the well-known city planner and architect Frederick Olmsted and I'm standing beneath one of my absolute favorite types of park trees. It's called the London Plane Tree. It's very characteristic of having this smooth bark. It looks a bit like a birch but much much bigger and it's actually a hybrid between a sycamore and another type of tree. And uh, they've been around since about 1650, I believe. Just, just gorgeous, uh, very magical. And I highly recommend spending some time with one if you can. Hi, so we're back from our time at the park and it was just absolutely gorgeous. We couldn't have asked for nicer weather. And um, I love that park because it's designed in such a beautiful way. There are very public thoroughfares, places where people are wheeling by with their baby carriages and their puppies and all of that. And then there are much quieter areas as well if you're looking for a bit of privacy or you want to read 
um, or have a moment of contemplation. And uh, the design is just brilliant and I love going there. And speaking of beautiful, warm, sunny weather and being outdoors in April, I've been enjoying finishing The Enchanted April by Elizabeth von Arnhem. I know this is a very popular read here on Booktube and um, it's worth it because it's just delightful. Um, I can really picture some of the characters in here, Mrs. Arbuthnot, Mrs. Wilkins, um, as characters from Call the Midwife, if you know that show on public television. And um, I can just picture them uh, in this medieval castle in Italy. And I'm just loving the, the way the characters are developing and interacting. So it's just been a delightful read and um, I'll be very sorry to come to the end of this one. It's just a treasure. And then I've also really been enjoying As You Like It by William Shakespeare. And um, I haven't read all of Shakespeare, but As You Like It has always been one of my absolute favorites. And I think spring and early summer are marvelous times of the year to read As You Like It. Um, <clears throat> I love the character of Rosalind, AKA Ganymede. Um, I love the uh, gender role reversal. And even though it's considered by some to be one of Shakespeare's lesser plays or comedies, it's got some of the greatest speeches we know. Um, it's got all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts and so on. And um, it's also got the song Under the Greenwood Tree, which I absolutely love. And in fact, when I was in high school, I loved reading As You Like It so much that I actually started a musical based on As You Like It and wrote five songs for it. Um, so um, I don't know, maybe I'll share those with you at some point but it's a perennial favorite of mine and it's been so much fun revisiting it. And I've um, uh, been enjoying this Folger Shakespeare Library edition. They're just, I think they have beautiful covers and um, very easy to read. And then also um, for a birthday gift to myself, I have pre-ordered Lady Caroline Lamb, A Free Spirit by Antonia Fraser. And as you know from watching my channel, I just finished reading Marie Antoinette by Antonia Fraser. I love her as a writer. I collect her books. And uh, Lady Caroline Lamb looks like such an interesting read. Um, I have a description of it here. The vivid and dramatic life of Lady Caroline Lamb, whose scandalous love affair with Lord Byron overshadowed her own creativity and desire to break free from society's constraints. So I think it's a gorgeous looking hardcover and I really look forward to getting that in June. And then I got a kind of a uh, mixed bag of both new titles and some gently used books from a second-hand bookstore. And this first one is a new title. Um, so this I received as a gift. This is called What Regency Women Did For Us by Rachel Knowles. Isn't that just a stunning, stunning cover? I love it. That's the back and that's the front. And um, so Rachel Knowles is basically giving you 10 or 12 sort of mini biographies of some feminists and luminaries of the Regency slash Georgian era. 
And um, of course, Jane Austen is in here. Um, I was very happy to see that Madame Tussaud, Marie Tussaud, who I just read a book about, is also in here. Um, last summer, I read a book about Mary Anning, and there's a chapter on Mary Anning in here. And then additionally, some women I've never heard of, astronomers, stonemakers, actresses, and more. So I'm really looking forward to reading this book as well. What Regency Women Did for Us. And this would also be um, a great choice for um, the People April Tag, which I mentioned last week, which is being done right now in the month of April. And it's all about memoir and um, autobiography and biography, um, the real stories of real people. And um, so this would be a great way to satisfy the challenge by reading a bunch of little mini biographies. And especially if you're a J Knight, this would be a great one to read. And then also as part of my birthday secondhand book haul, I picked up this hardcover copy of Our Village, Sketches of Rural Character and Scenery by Mary Russell Mitford. Let me see if I can get this in the light without the shine. It's a gorgeous cover. See the sheepies on the back. You know I love sheep. Um, and this is very interesting. Again, this would be great for the People April tag. And um, it's a collection of about 100 literary sketches of rural life written by Mary Russell Mitford and originally published during the 1820s and 1830s. The series first appeared in the Ladies Magazine and um, the Vivid series was based upon life in Three Mile Cross, a hamlet in the parish of Shinfield, southeast of Reading in Berkshire, where she lived. And so this looks fascinating, and I thought it would be a really good accompaniment to the Regency Women book and the Caroline Lamb book. Um, and it's got beautiful, beautiful, just sort of slice of life portraits of every day. And this is um, a really lavishly illustrated edition. So it's got some wonderful paintings and prints and more. And it just talks about everyday life, uh, a cricket match, haymaking, um, wine consumption, um, who, what else? Nutting, going nutting. Here's another um, rural view. So it's absolutely just packed with beautiful, beautiful paintings. Here's going to the races. And it's a um, just a really gentle, quiet woman's account, uh, first person account of everyday life in a remote village in the early 1800s. So um, that's right up my street and I'm really um, anxious to get to this one because it just looks so beautiful. So there's that. And then a really, really beautiful book that I got really inexpensively was 100 Letters That Changed the World by Colin Salter. This is also a hardcover book. It's beautiful. And I'll just read you uh, what's on the back here, the description. 100 Letters That Changed the World is a collection of fascinating letters written at the turning points of history, some penned by historical figures, others written to them. Plots, threats, appeals for peace, secret messages, and heartbreaking farewells all feature in this fascinating compendium, starting with the Spartans in 346 BC and ending with Greta Thunberg in 2019. Featured letters include Pliny the Younger, Joan of Arc, Elizabeth I, 
Charles II, Thomas Jefferson, Napoleon, Lord Nelson, Abraham Lincoln, Helen Keller, Vincent van Gogh, Albert Einstein, Eleanor Roosevelt, Virginia Woolf. It just looks stunning. And let me just find one for you to show you. Abigail Adams tells husband John to remember the ladies. So there's a double sp page spread with that. So another great title for the People April, and um, I love social history and epistolary um, ephemera, so um, this is right up my alley, and it's another one I'm putting on my bedside table. And then I was fortunate to receive a gift through the mail in the form of a vintage book that I remember from my childhood. And I was so thrilled to get a new vintage copy. Um, and that is Daddy Long Legs by Jean Webster. I'll just show you the cover there. And that's the girl, Judy, who is the protagonist of the story. And she uh, grows up in an orphanage and at one point um, she suddenly learns that she has a mysterious benefactor and the benefactor sends her away to college and buys her clothes and helps to support her and um, she sends him thank you letters and um, she only knows him as daddy long legs because she doesn't know who it is and um, they begin a correspondence um, and get to know each other through the years and um, a very special relationship develops between them and it's just a charming charming story this edition is in really super great shape and so i'm um, hoping to get to this one soon i'd love to revisit it it's just charming And finally, I um, also was stunned to find three vintage books together on the shelf at the secondhand bookstore. And um, as you may know from watching prior videos, I collect Rumor Garden books. And I've shown you my copy of The Doll's House, and I've shown you um, In This House of Breed. And I love Rumor Garden. I used to read Rumor Garden books as a child. And I remember uh, my, fa my grandfather. And I remember my, I used to read Rumor Garden books as a child. And um, I remember my grandfather built a cottage on Lake Ontario years and years and years ago. And we used to go down and spend the summers there. And I can still see on the white, cottage bookshelves in the living room, um, a series of books by Rumor Godden. And so I was absolutely thrilled to find some of the titles that I've been missing from my vintage set. So um, I've got three here. The same person must have donated all three. Um, the first is China Court. This one came in a uh, plastic sleeve. But it's not a library copy. It's somebody just put this on here to protect it, and it's beautiful. There's a picture of Rumor Garden on the back. And then um, to go along with that were an episode of Sparrows, which I've never read. There's the back of that one. It sounds also like a charming story. And then this one I've seen recommended by other people on booktube and um, it's The Green Gage Summer by Rima Godden. I love this cover especially. It's just the, the colors are so vivid and rich and bright. Um, there's the back of that one and they're all in really pretty good shape. So. Um, that is like hitting the jackpot or the lottery to have three Rumor Garden hardcovers available in the store for pittance. 
I'm so excited and I'm going to choose one of them to read this summer. I'm not sure which one. Maybe you can help me decide. If, have you read one of these? If so, which one is your favorite and what should I start with? Let me know in the comments below. Hello, it's me again. Well, uh, dinner is over and everything was absolutely delicious and my family have now all gone home, except for my son who lives with me. And um, we had a delicious dinner. I had what I have every year on my birthday, which is scallops. And um, that's a, just a sort of special treat for me that I don't have very often. And then I also wanted to give a shout out to the bakers that made the birthday cake, and that's Donna Marie's Bakery. And they're a local baker. Um, I was actually diagnosed about 12 years ago with celiac disease. And growing up, I loved to bake and I loved baked goods. Um, and I've gotten pretty good at making them again. But because it's my birthday, I wanted a special cake. Um, you know, that I didn't make myself. And so we went to Donna Marie's Bakery to get it. And Donna Marie's Bakery is a, a completely gluten-free bakery. They have delicious cakes. They have special pies. They have wonderful chocolate truffles, which are quite decadent if you're just looking for a smaller treat and you don't want a whole full-size piece of cake, but you want something delicious and chocolatey. Um, they make breads, they make um, a challah bread, they make um, English muffins, they sell gluten-free pasta that's imported from Italy. So lots of really delicious things. So thank you to the staff and bakers at Donna Marie's Bakery. The cake was delicious. It's a uh, vanilla cake with a buttercream frosting and a strawberry filling. So it was really, really wonderful. And um, I also received some other gifts, which I'll share with you next time because it's getting late. Um, but uh, everything was just really fantastic. So, and thanks to my family for coming over and sharing it with me. Um, and that's about all for now. I, it's been a wonderful day. I hope you've enjoyed coming along with me to Highland Park and to um, look at the different books that I received and that I got at the secondhand bookstore. And I hope you're having a lovely weekend and a lovely April, lovely spring. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.